So I want to give you an example of collision. And uh, we'll do more examples of collision after we cover quantum mechanics. But um, I think this is at least something that will get you to uh, think about a little bit more, the difference between your intuition that was based on non-relativistic mechanics and frankly, you know, learning to stop trusting in your uh, non-relativistic intuition. At least once you recognize that you are dealing with a relativistic situation. So let me give you the simplest possible example of a collision that I thought was not trivial. So let me give you this. So this is a collision example. And uh, let me do a completely inelastic collision where two things stick together. And, um, and yeah, so you have, a, let's say, flat plane. You have a block of mass m. You have another block of same mass m that's coming in at speed. Let me give you some reasonable speed of 0 0.9 c. Good? And Sorry, I was like, yeah, that's really reasonable relativistic speed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess I could make it 0 0.8. Let me make it 0 0.8. That's probably better. Um, so they collide, and uh, it's an inelastic collision. So after a collision, they will stick together. And here's the question. After the collision, how fast do they move off together? Do, you, do people remember the answer to this if you were dealing with a non-relativistic physics? What was the answer for this final velocity here? Dimitri? Yeah, half, right? Half, uh, so 0 0.4 um, c. So this was based on conservation of momentum. And if you remember, with uh, and if you remember with the non-relativistic mechanics, uh, if you said it's an inelastic collision, then you'd have said, um, well, then energy is not conserved. <laughs> and in the collision, some energy is lost. So uh, let's uh, work out this again using, so this is the, this is the uh, non-relativistic answer. Non-relativistic. Let's just uh, try working it out again, this time using the relativistically correct expressions. Good. So, all right, I guess uh, well, I will start by copying what we did from um, the physics 4A. So I'm going to say, well, momentum is definitely conserved. So let me write down conservation of momentum expression. So my initial momentum, um, that would be, um, gamma based on 0 0.8 c. I'm going to start subscripting gamma because there's going to be multiple gammas based on different velocities. Um, so gamma and 0 0.8 c um, plus 0. It's not moving. So gamma is 1, but v is 0, so it's 0 momentum, is equal to my final momentum, which would be um, Oh, I think I'm going to run into a bit of trouble. Hmm. <laughs> Trying to see if I can just do that. Uh, I, I think I'm going to be fine. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be fine. Uh, let me just keep going. Uh, gamma times, uh, gamma, uh, I'm going to subscript it, some final velocity. And what is your final mass? Yeah, so you might think it's 2m, so let me write that down. That's the part where I think I'm going to get into trouble. I'll explain in a bit. Um, times uh, your final velocity, so v final. Yeah. Um, how many unknowns do you have in this expression? This is known, right? No, known. 
So technically, you might think that you have two unknowns. Do you really have two unknowns? No, you have one unknown because these two are depending on each other. In fact, let me rewrite that expression for V in terms of gamma again. So V in terms of gamma was C times the square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. Right? So let me actually rewrite the right hand side in terms of that so that you are not confused into thinking that there's two unknowns here. There's really only one unknown. And in terms of that one unknown, I can write it this way. So 2m times this c times square root of, so I had the 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. I'm going to absorb this gamma into it. So it's a gamma v final squared minus 1. So, all right, that seems easy enough. So I can solve for the final gamma and um, get my answer. So let me do that, and then I'll tell you how it's all wrong. <laughs> I think I'll have enough time to do it twice, once wrong and then once correctly. Um, so, um, so to solve for this gamma for final, I have to square both sides to get rid of the square root. Right? So let me actually move this over first and then square both sides. So m's cancel out, c's cancel out, so I get gamma 0 0.8c times 0 0.8, the whole thing, oh wait, whole thing divided by 2 squared is equal to gamma v final squared minus 1. Um, so uh, solving for gamma, gamma v final is equal to square root of this whole thing plus 1. So 1 plus, and everything here is actually numerical. Based on v equals 0 0.8c, this is, there's a number associated with this. And so that's why I'm just leaving it in that form because I'm just going to plug in the numbers. So <laughs> 0 0.8 times gamma 0 0.8c over 2, the whole thing squared. So that's the gamma v final. Let me just get a, um, um, oh, I don't actually have to get an answer. Uh, let me put it this way. So gamma is, wait, can I? No, 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 I think getting a numerical answer is the quickest route. So let me get a numerical value for this. Let me do it this way. Um, so I need a this numerical value first. So that's going to be 1 over square, square root of 1 minus 0 0.8 squared. So 1 point that. What is that? Is it 5 thirds? It's 5 thirds, right? All right, so let me write this out. Um, square root of 1 plus 0 0.8 times 5 thirds divided by 2, divide, um, the whole thing square, squared, and then square root. So 1 point, okay, I actually need that value. All right, um, so that's gamma we final, can I copy it? It doesn't let me copy. It's not letting me copy it. Okay, okay, oh good. Oh, so that's gamma. <laughs> so if I know gamma, I can calculate back to V. So let me do that. So that's a square root of one minus one over that thing squared. All right, so 0 0.555. So this is the answer we get. Um, the relative strictly correct version says uh, V final is 0 0.555C. So we already get one result that um, what you would have guessed from your rel non-relativistic intuition is not correct. You get something that's uh, substantially different. So kind of intuitive answers you had before, 
um, they sort of go out the window. Um, it's a, those results look the simple because you are dealing with a, the low speed approximation. Now that you are dealing with a relativistically correct expression, you will have to learn to recalculate them because some of the shortcuts you may have memorized won't work anymore. And let me tell you this is a surprise with the three minutes left. Um, this is actually not correct either. <laughs> if I gave you this to you as a homework problem and you work this out and you plug that into my open map, it, it'll keep saying that you got it wrong and my open map will actually be right for saying that you got it wrong. It comes down to this. Um, so in working this out, we assume that the total energy is not conserved, right? We just use conservation of momentum. But to, um, so energy, once you account for all forms of energy, is the energy always conserved? Yeah. Right? So mechanical energy is maybe not always conserved. But once you include all forms of energy, energy is always conserved. And this rest energy includes that all forms of energy. So in special relativity, there is never a situation where total energy is not conserved. When we call something inelastic collision, all we mean is that kinetic energy is not conserved. Whatever energy is not in kinetic energy goes into rest energy. So, so the, this is the step I was hesitating because I knew it was going to lead me to wrong answer. Um, this is not correct. That's not correct. Instead, of what I have put here is, well, it's some unknown mass m. The mass of the combined thing is not even going to be 2m. That's what you would have guessed non-relativistically, where you're used to saying, well, mechanical energy doesn't always have to be conserved. But I'm saying total energy is always conserved. So you have to, in order to figure this out, you have to write down a second set of equations, which is the statement that, uh, which is this, that the energy is conserved. So if the total energy is conserved, then this is what I need to say. The total energy initially, gamma mc squared uh, plus the rest energy of that, mc squared, so gamma 0 0.8, uh, that's equal to your final total energy, which would be gamma v final, gamma v final times this unknown mass times c squared. Okay. So you know you have one more unknown, but you have one more equation to solve that unknown with. So um, so I guess I don't have. 30 seconds is probably not enough time to finish it. I kind of don't want to anyway. There's a better way to do this than what I'm doing here. So, um, so energy is always conserved in special relativity. In a sense, it's actually conceptually easier. Um, there's a mathematical joke that you will only understand after you've taken upper division uh, linear algebra, which is a linear algebra based on complex vector space, complex linear vector space, is that it's the complex cases that are simpler. Complex meaning complex numbers. Um, it's the more advanced the cases where it's conceptually simpler. In low speed approximations, you have to worry about, oh, is my total energy conserved or not? I'm telling you in special relativity, you don't have to worry about it because it's always conserved. This total energy here, this is the total all inclusive energy that will never be violated. So. Um, so, you know, it's conceptually simpler, but that also means uh, you might have to do more complicated math. And some of that will be helped by what I'm going to introduce on Thursday. Uh, this actually simplifies the math that you have to go through quite a bit. So we'll definitely make time to talk about this on Thursday. And I guess, as I said at the beginning of class today, we'll use a little bit of time on um, next week to wrap up special relativity. <laughs>